I would like to start with my salutations to Feroz. If you look at the spelling of his name, Feroz is far-sighted, energetic, robust, organized, sensitive, and effective. No wonder, with his wonderful team, he has been able to turn IIS into innovative and inspiring solutions. So we are already getting solutions to our in summit. I would like to salute Shantiji, and in her words, her better half, who are enabling the whole country, our courageous souls sitting here, who are second to none. They are proving themselves in their performances since yesterday. We had such a lovely evening, evening where everybody sang with full-throated ease, danced in ecstasy, and the tender, loving care, understanding, acceptance made it an enjoyable evening, full of happiness. And this is what inclusion does. Inclusion is the ultimate winner. Shifting this inclusivity of the evening of joy, I want to bring you to the essential aspect of inclusivity in our society, and that is education. Of course, education has to be looked at holistically with health and employment. So the triangular approach has to be understood. Shikhaji, please uh, change the slide. Uh, I need not go into all these details of population. We have been talking about it all the time. All I want to say from these figures is there is a large percentage of those who need to be educated. Next, please. If we talk of inclusion, it is not just you know, putting people with and without disability together in the classroom. It refers to the opportunity for persons with disability to participate fully in all of the educational, employment, consumer, recreational, community, and domestic activities that typify every society. It says it all. And actually speaking, the philosophy of inclusive education rests on giving equal opportunities and full participation to an integrated group of persons with and without disability studying together. This kind of inclusion we had with uh, people from all walks of life yesterday, and now we are into another session. Next, please. Uh, making inclusive education a reality seems to be difficult but possible. It is a process that involves transformation of schools and centers of learning to cater for all children, boys and girls, able and disabled, marginalized and less privileged. Now, there have been policies and legislation. There was beautiful inclusion uh, yesterday, having government representatives also with us. There are so many legislations, but it can be really a drop in the ocean, as everybody is saying, because implementation is not the way it should be. Next, please. Now, if you really look at it philosophically, inclusive education is a journey, not a destination. We cannot say we are going from Agra to Delhi. It is an ongoing journey where we have to think of very good teachers, material, barrier-free environment, equal opportunities, full participation of children with and without disability, support services, parents' involvement, and many more. You can go on adding compartments to this train. Next, please. Now, keeping this journey in mind, Amar Jyoti started in 1981 with a holistic approach. You can see here 
in one campus of an acre of land, we have inclusive education from nursery to eighth of cross-disability children studying with non-disabled. Medical care is provided in the campus. By medical care, I mean all therapeutic interventions, regular OPD with 26 doctors volunteering their services once a week for one hour with child guidance center. And Amarjyoti has also introduced Olympics in India, which has nothing to do with sports. It has vocational skills, and we have capacity building courses like a four and a half years course of physiotherapy recognized by University of Delhi, teachers training courses in special education, IGNU Center, which is providing almost 21 courses with 3,000 students enrolled. We also have several other vocational and skill development courses as part of the curriculum and for people coming from the community. And outreach program of community-based rehabilitation is also in 10 urban slums. Earlier, it was in 30 urban slums. So this is the holistic approach being adopted in Delhi and its branch in Gwalior. Next, please. So, so far, since 1981, the journey has been from its modest beginning with terrace for an office, sitting on dharis and dining chairs fitted with wheels to now having completely barrier-free premises, a bus fitted with hydraulically operated lift and furniture specially designed for children with specific needs in both Delhi as well as Gwalior, Amrajyoti really has come a long way. You can see the old tires also being used as a swing when we could not afford to have a regular swing in the premises. Next, please. Now, here you see from under the tree to a barrier-free, absolutely accessible environment in school, uh, accessibility in uh, classrooms with customized furniture, tactile path for the visually impaired, disabled-friendly, transport for wheelchair users, and there is everything that one requires to reach from one corner to the other in our campus. Next, please. Here you see children getting ready for total communication, children who are having speech and hearing impairment. We have a lab for them, which gives regular speech training and Audiometry is also there. We have uh, round tables so that uh, wheelchair users can comfortably go around uh, and sit in the classroom very comfortably. We have science lab, we have a language lab, we also have computer labs. And here is Nishta, our pride, who is given two benches together to sit and write with her toes because she lost her upper limbs. His, her, Writing is better than all of us. I can show you some time. Uh, she also uh, gets a position in first five every year, and she dances very well. She got uh, an Outstanding Achievers Award from President of India. Next, please. <laughs> next. Shikha, next, please.
So, so what you see is a smile on each and everyone's face. That is our award. Next, please. Hello, Dipanjo. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And what about you? I'm also fine. Come, let's have a cup of tea or coffee. Oh, wonderful. Come, let's go to the cafe. Okay, let's, let's have fun. So, <laughs> this is what happens when they study in the language lab. These are children who didn't even know how to say good morning earlier. Now their parents are surprised when they talk in English most of the time. Next, please. Here we have basketball on wheelchair. We have judo. We have integrated sports. You can see the beautiful march. Uh, we have cricket. We have swimming. As I said, all these children, every single day, prove themselves to be second to none. Next, please. We have been organizing National Integrated Sports Meet. Uh, there is a very beautiful uh, clip of some of the achievements of Amar Jyoti. We have, our children have performed internationally, uh, initially uh, at the House of Commons, then Seattle, Florida, USA, uh, Canada. And uh, they were so popular as performers that Every year we get invitation, but for want of money, we are not able to take them. We also introduced children with disability in our Republic Day Parade. It was a big struggle to have them, but then we managed with a, a moving trailer where they did Bhangra on wheelchair, and the president of uh, Italy was there our, as chief guest, and he gave them standing ovation, and lakhs and lakhs of people joined him in giving them standing ovation. We have also participated in Rahagiri. You must have heard about it, and I think we are going to bring it to Bangalore from Delhi, uh, if I'm right. Mr. Mukesh Jain was talking about it. And uh, this wheelchair basketball is already a very, very popular event. And these are the paintings which were exhibited in Geneva, prize-winning paintings by our school children. So all this proves disability is not inability. In fact, we cut DIS. It is ability all around. Next, please. <laughs> Here is a clip from Ragiri. Skill development is a part and parcel of our academic program. Uh, we have computer applications, cutting and tailoring, artificial jewelry making, bakery, beauty culture, art and craft, pottery. You can see Nishta again making diyas uh, with her toes. And we also have several other uh, trades which are uh, very popular and helping a large number of people in the community as well. Uh, for training. Next, please. Uh, as I said, Amar Jyoti introduced Olympics in India in 1981. For the first international Olympics. I took six people uh, with disability, and our girl with hearing impairment stole the show by staging a dance performance when she couldn't even hear the music. And here you have some glimpses of Olympics where India has been winning several medals uh, every four years in international event and at state and national level. Next, please. Uh, here is a clip from Olympics again. 
This is the National Abu Olympics in Delhi. And some of the events you can see, they are uh, in action. This particular event helps in getting them jobs. And here are glimpses of courage. I talked of Nishta. Let me talk of Pooja. Pooja went for Special Olympics uh, recently, uh, and she has come back with three medals, one gold, one silver, and one bronze. This is unheard of. And last year, two of our students went, and they came back with gold and silver. So Amar Jyoti has uh, very many students making us proud every year. Next, please. Here you have Shubham. Uh, he has only one limb. And he manages practically everything. Here he is working on computer. Recently he went to Indonesia and won Special Challengers Award, uh, which was a very big achievement for our country, you know. Uh, in IT competitions, you can't imagine, at this age, you know, he's, uh, I think, 15 or 16. He got this award, and I'm sure he will get many more in times to come. Even Mahesh uh, secured 93% in 12th board, and we are very happy to say that now he is a student of Shriram College of Commerce and really is performing well in academics. Next, please. <laughs> These are again pride of Omar Jyoti, Urmul Kher. She is appearing for IAS. Uh, Mamta, she is a TV artist. Jogender, he has opened his own gym. Sonubola, he is with International Handicap. Devanshu, he is a painter with hearing impairment. He is uh, really making wonderful paintings. Uh, Gulshan is a theater man. He is in the Guinness Book of Records. He is a wheelchair spinner, and he has done maximum number of spins. And uh, Mini Sharma used to be my student in college. And then he was, uh, she was appointed as a teacher, then became vice principal, principal, and now she has been uh, taken up as deputy director education by the Department of Education in East of Delhi. Next, please. Now, these good practices are being practiced by several institutions like these. Uh, action for Ability, Akshay Prithashtan, Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan, Blind People's Association, so on and so forth, and many more. But what I'm saying is, as just now uh, we were discussing, uh, Bangalore also needs uh, schools with inclusive education. And as I, I said, we won't mind sharing our expertise. Uh, I will love to come and have workshops, and SAP has already volunteered to give support to host those workshops. Next, please. Now, what is the problem in uh, making it effective inclusion in academics? Uh, the challenges are there, difficult but possible. I'm about to finish. Uh, attitudinal barriers and social uh, inequality, lack of awareness, inadequate opportunities, resistance of parents, inadequate infrastructure, paucity of funds, scarcity of trained teachers, poor linkage, preschool to high school education. Next, please. So, way forward is creating sensitization and awareness, academics, policy and implementation, inclusive environment, which through this summit we are already doing. We have to strengthen our teamwork. We have to have barrier-free environment. We have to have integrated sports and cultural activities. Social attitudes have to be eradicated. Teachers' training is very, very essential. And inclusive peer group learning also helps a lot. Next, please. So this is how we can uh, converge resources, RCI, NIOS, NCPCR, CCPD, IGNU, all need to work together. Next, please. So the mantra of convergence is to involve community, family, educational institutions, social agencies, media, government,
corporate sector, then only we can say equal responsibilities alone can lead to equal opportunities. Next, please. Friends, I hope you will all agree with me that too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. Thank you. Next, next please. A big thank you to you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. I, I think definitely Bangalore needs an Amar Jyoti. What do you all say? Right? We definitely need bright children, right, who can take on future of India. Thank you so much, ma'am.